Hey guys, welcome back to another video in our mini series on React hooks. So in this video, we will learn everything about use callback and we will also see how it differs from the use memo hook in terms of optimization in our React components. So if this sounds interesting, then stick around. Also, don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. Alright guys, so I have a very basic application setup and I'm using the same example code which we saw in our last video, the use memo hook. So if you have missed the video on the use memo hook, then I recommend you to watch that first. You can click on the card above and jump to it directly. So what we have here is we have the same factorial function, which is an expensive operation. So for that, we have done the memoization of the factorial function. So this is what we have done here. We have made the use of use memo to memoize the factorial function, which is an heavy operation. And then what we have, we have the input element and we are managing the state of the input element using the state variable name and set name. So when I click on the increment, it takes the incremental value and then the value is passed to the factorial function to calculate the factorial of that particular counter. So if I make it two, then it's going to calculate the factorial of two, three, then it's going to make a factorial of three, which is six. And when I type something in the input text, then the text is displayed here. And this value we are being displayed from an another component, a function component, which is the display name. So we pass the value in the display name and then the name is being printed in the display name component. And we are also using the memoization for this component as our props are not changing every time whenever we click on the increment or the decrement. So we are memoizing this component so that our props have a referential equality. So till now everything is clear, but now there is a scenario that in this display name, instead of passing the name, which is the value, you need to pass a function. And in that case, how we will do it. So if I want to pass a function here, so let's create a function. So I'm going to write constant display name, and this will be equals to an arrow function. And this actually returns the name. All right. And now we have a scenario that we need to pass this display name in our uh, display name component. So what I will do, I'm going to change this to display name and I will change this to display name. All right. And we will just remove this memoization for this display name component. We don't want it. All right. And instead of this name, we are going to have a display name as a prop. And then we are going to have an use effect so that we can get the value. So let me import a use effect. So I'm going to import a use effect and I will go here and then I'm going to add a state variable. So I'm going to take a state variable as value and I will take it as a set value and this will be equals to the use state and the initial value is an empty string. All right. And from the use effect. So whenever we get the display name as a prop, we need to have a use effect. And this use effect will run some logic. Maybe it calls some API calls or it do some logic based on the display name function. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the value based on whatever the display name function is. All right. And after setting the value, I'm just going to do a console dot log component rendered. All right. And this will only have a dependency will be the dependent on the display name function. So I'm going to write display name. All right. And this value now will become the value. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to add the value here. All right. So now we have done it, whatever we wanted. And now let's go to the inspect element and now let's see what actually happening. So I'm going to the console. I will clear the console. And for now I will just remove this console. We don't want it. All right. And now you will see that whenever I type anything in my input element, then my app component gets re-rendered and a new instance of a display name function is generated. And this is passed to my display name component. When it is passed, we get a new instance of display name and then we run a use effect and we print the value, which is the, my name is the page, which is very clear. But now the problem is whenever I click on this increment or a decrement. So when I click on the increment, my app component re-renders again because the state of the counter is changed. And when the app component re-renders again, 
there is a new instance of a display name is being created and this new instance is passed in the display name component and then we get printing again the use effect will run and this will so every time when I do an increment or a decrement this app component will get re-renders and it's going to give me every time a new display name function which will be passed in my component so there is a problem and we can solve this problem with the use of the use callback react hook so what we can do here is let's go and import the use callback hook so I'm going to import a use callback like this and then what we can do we are going to actually wrap this display name function in our use callback so if I write a constant here and this constant is equals to the display name and then we are going to use a use callback and this use callback will actually take the function which we want to memoize. So we need to memoize this whole function. So I'm going to copy this whole function. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to add this whole function here. All right. And now we can remove this. We don't want this. And this function is only dependent on the name state. So I'm going to add the dependency as name. All right, and now let's save it and now let's try it again. So now I clear the console and if I write the page here, then it's obvious that the state name will get updated and a new instance of display name will be generated with the new value of name and this will be passed to a display name function and we get to print this display name. But now let's see what happens when we actually change the counter. So if I click on the counter, then you will see that the counter is increasing, but my component is not getting rendered anymore. So if I clear it and if I click on it, then you will see that the app component is getting re-rendered, but it's not generating a new value of the display name function. And that's why we are not able to getting this. And this is how we can actually optimize our display name component from getting the new value of the display name function again and again. Now you will have a question that what is a difference between a use memo and a use callback because in use memo also we were doing the same thing. So the difference here is you will see that the memoization of the function if you want to memoize the function you make use of a callback use callback but if you want to memoize the value of a function then you just do a use memo and let me give you a quick demonstration so you will see that we have make use of the use memo for this result and now let me just do a console dot log and if I log my result so this is the use memo and let me log the result here. All right, and I'm going to do a same log for our callback. So this is our callback and I'm going to write here use callback. So this will become callback and this value will become the display name. All right, and now if I save it, then you will be see that if I click on the increment, I actually get the memo as the value and not the factorial function. But for the other one, the callback one, you will see that we get the actual callback function. And that is the main difference between the use memo and use callback. But when we make use of use callback, we get some additional features to use it. So now if I want that, uh, let me now remove these logs. And what we can do is now suppose this is my callback and in this callback if I want to pass some argument so let me pass an argument here as uh, I'm going to write hello all right I need to pass an argument then I can use this argument inside this use callback function and I'm going to take it as greeting and I'm going to return here greeting plus the name let me add a space here so I'm going to add a space all right, and now you can see that if I refresh my page, then I already have a hello, which I passed it from my callback function. And if I type anything, then it's going to write hello the page, or if I type hello Malvia, anything, it will type the hello. So this is what the additional feature you get it when you use the callback. But you should always be careful by using the use memo or you use the use callback that they always have a performance overhead because whenever you make use of this use memo or use callback, they actually take some memory to hold the values whenever the app is getting re-rendered. So initially you never make use of these things. Once you write all the code and you feel that there is an optimization required for the component re-rendering, in that case only you should apply the use memo or the use callback. And one more thing is when you make use of the use callback, it actually gives you a referential equality on the functions. 
So it's not going to create a new instance of the function every time. When you make the use callback, it memorizes the function and the same function is being returned every time. So that's where you get a referential equality for the functions as well. All right, so that's all you need to know about the use callback and the difference between the use memo and use callback. So I hope you like this video. A thumbs up is appreciated. You can also connect with me via Facebook or Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter for latest updates. I will add the links in the description below. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So I will see you in the next video with a new React token. And thank you. Thanks for watching.